started playing, that was about like 11, 12. My, my oldest sister, she uh, was really into like the Deftones. She taught me my first song, which was a Deftones song, heavy rock song. And I used, to, I used to creep on her door and listen to her practice. And then I discovered Stevie Ray and Jimi Hendrix and it was all over from there. All over, yeah. But I'm a songwriter, musician, uh, who's been doing it, I'm 32, I've been doing it pretty much my whole life, since about 16, as was my first job, played for uh, Blues Boy Willie, Texas Hall of Fame harmonica player, but uh, just been writing songs and, you know, hitting the road since. <laughs> I struggled since a teenager. I uh, was just involved. I was doing cocaine and when I was like in eighth grade, summer, so. There's a lot of um, temptations and bad things nowadays for our students. So definitely having them engage into music or artistic classes I think that's the best thing we can do. And if we can provide them with all the opportunities, uh, I think that would keep them away from bad distractions. The idea of a Freedom in Music project uh, started in Massachusetts, actually. You know, I suffered an injury to my left arm, which uh, I wasn't able to play uh, out professionally, you know, any longer. I still wanted to stay involved with music, and Linda had the idea of, um, you know, bringing music out to uh, challenge youth. So that's how this all came about. We're a uh, 501c3, 100% volunteer organization. Nobody makes a penny doing this. And it's really to turn uh, challenge youth primarily youth in uh, youth detention centers, recovery academies, in the last 18 months, Title I schools onto the power of music, you know, having a different way of expressing yourself through music than uh, sticking needles in your arm. Let's play the last system of page two. Well, we had enough guitars to have in class, but we didn't have enough to lend the students to practice at home. Music, in order to improve, they need to put the additional time at home, practice at home, and I think music is, is great to keep them focused and something artistic and beautiful. You know, I had a lot of good things going for me as a young, 20 years old, I was going overseas and playing, and a lot of these things went to just nowhere because I was addicted to drugs and alcohol and did some embarrassing things and just screwed my life up. So many of my friends that are doing the same thing now. I had a friend pass away two days ago because of that stuff. So it's kind of helped me link up with the Freedom of Music Project and they've helped me immensely get sober, helping me touch other people that, that need the help. There are incarcerated youth um, from around the state, and uh, they're with us from a year till um, some of them are youthful. So they stay, they stay with us till they're 21. Uh, but primarily they're there for a year or two. So anytime you uh, have uh, a diversity of uh, classes and interests and so like guitar and music um, I think it really helps them focus on their core classes as well because they want to be able to continue with these programs and 
continue learning and maybe, you know, at one point uh, make it a career or make it uh, just a part of their life so they have something to, to do and, you know, they're sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> and it's, you know, I'll grab a guitar and just keep playing. They're running or they're begging for attention or help, you know, and and also a way to get some anger out or just something to do. That was my thing. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do this right now. And but nobody else around believes in that. You know, it's like, oh, that's just a pipe dream. And even if it is a pipe dream, music is a healing thing. So it can help somebody get their life together. It can help somebody get some feelings out and, you know, and then it'll lead to something good, you know. So many musicians have helped us, signing guitars that we raffle, auction off. Tommy Emanuel, Jesse Cook, Big Head Todd and the Monsters, Robert Cray, Dave Mason, the list goes on and on. I've got lots of signed guitars by uh, world famous musicians, such as Steve Vai, Paul Rogers, Les Paul and Ace Freely, a blues guitar that has all the blues legends on it. Um, and that's how we raise money. You know, we raffle and auction them off. I've had scenarios with students, their only motivation to go to school is guitar class. And I didn't find out that till the students, you know, told me like they were failing every class, but they were engaged because of the guitar class. I ran into one of my ex-students um, right over here on Rio Grande, actually, at a gas station. And she, uh, she recognized me, but I didn't recognize her, but she mentioned she was in my guitar class at one point, and, and she, she was um, very thankful that, you know, she had the opportunity to, to learn how to play in that facility. And uh, she also mentioned that she had a daughter and that she was teaching her daughter how to play. And I didn't real at that point. I didn't realize like when you teach someone, it's not just them you're teaching. It's everybody they come in contact with. It's just uh, horrific what what's happened to a lot of these kids. So I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to turn these kids on to the power of music. A lot of these kids have nothing, and now they have this guitar and they sit down and they write the music. I mean, Cody's a prime example of that. My life has changed uh, immensely for the better and now I get to do music for the better. I look back at the songs I used to make and the songs I'm making now and it's just like, I can't believe I wasted so much time you know, hurting my brain and my soul from doing just negative, nasty drugs and alcohol and behaving in, a, in an ill manner. If you could find the love that, that I've recently found again with making music, your heart's gonna be pretty full. It's gonna be, and you get to do it, you know, your, your heart's gonna be full and you're never gonna wanna walk back.